Australia will upgrade its land warfare capabilities under a roughly $2.5 billion deal that will provide its army with 75 M1A2 SEP V3 Abrams tanks together with armored support vehicles. The decision is part of a broader initiative that also includes plans to introduce nuclear-powered attack submarines as well as long-range hypersonic weapons and armed aerial drones. The M1A2 SEP V3 represents a significant improvement over the Australian Army's current M1A1 variants, 59 of which were acquired second-hand from the U.S. Army and Marine Corps in 2006 and succeed Cold War-era Leopard 1s. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Australia plans to bulk up its military muscle as it faces potential threats from China. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. The backdrop is critical here and comes at a juncture when the relationship between Australia and China has seen major deterioration. It's interesting to note that relation was cordial, but this changed since President Xi Jinping became the leader. The situation became worse after Australia asked for a free and fair probe into coronavirus origin and China retaliated with a higher tariff on Australian goods. Some time back, in a speech to the Australian Defence Force Academy in Canberra, Morrison said his country must face the reality that we have moved into a new and less benign strategic era. It's evident that Australia cannot sit back idle and have to prepare for any eventualities. Abram was first introduced in 1980 to replace the M60 main battle tank which was introduced in 1960. It was significantly more potent than the M60 and featured many top-of-the-line components like a fire control system that allowed up to 90% accuracy at ranges of 2,000 meters. The tank was technologically well ahead of most other tanks of its era. The U.S. military has kept on upgrading the tank to maintain its edge. For example, in 1986, the tank received a more powerful 120mm German-engineered main gun, and in 1988 it got a layer of depleted uranium armor to increase protection. These upgrades were provided to Abrams so that it could dominate the Soviet tanks and repeal any armored thrust. This helped Abrams' tanks roll over enemy tanks in Afghanistan and Iraq. Abrams was designed so that it could accommodate new enhancements. The M1A2 Abrams SEP V3 has added several features. Here's a brief overview. 1. It now includes an ammunition data link. With this, the tank can set a distance at which a shell will explode. So if a building is targeted, then the shell will explode inside the building instead of exploding after it's flown through it. This will enhance the precision of the hit. Destruction will be inflicted at the correct place and limit unintended damage. 2. M1A2 SEP V3 has added a better infrared sight. Infrared sights basically enhance the night fighting ability, and with this improvement, the new variant will be better equipped for twilight missions. 3. The remotely operated 50 caliber machine gun will now be positioned at a comparatively lower height, enabling better targeting position. 
4. M1A2 SEP V3 has an auxiliary power unit APU. This will allow the tank to keep running communications and sensors and maintain battlefield awareness without having to use its powerful 1,500 horsepower gas turbine engine. The engine is known to use a lot of fuel and is also a target for infrared homing weapons. 5. It also adds passive armor, which will improve the tank's ability to survive when hit with the latest anti-tank weapons. 6. New Explosive Reactive Armor ERA, packages, known as the Abrams Reactive Armor Tile Arit, are deployed. ERA basically works by placing tiles that have explosives. When an incoming projectile hits them, they explode outward and the explosive power of the projectile is deflected. These tiles are fitted on specific portions of a tank. 7. The most important upgrade will certainly be the addition of the Trophy Active Protection System apps. Israeli-made Trophy will be fitted on the side of M1A2 SEP V3. Active or hard kill protection systems consist of sensors that are capable of detecting and tracking incoming anti-tank projectiles. After that, the targeted tank launches an interceptor projectile to shoot the incoming round. This is different from the soft kill approach which involves jamming the projectile's guidance or confusing them. In 2017, Colonel Glenn Dean, a project manager at the Army's Redstone Arsenal, had told Military.com that he tried to kill the Abrams tank 48 times and failed. The Chief of Army, Lieutenant General Burr, states, because of their versatility, tanks can be used in a wide range of scenarios, environments, and levels of conflict in the region. This system is the only part of the Australian Defense Force that can successfully operate in medium to high threat land environments. The Chinese military is being used as a tool by the Chinese Communist regime to push its expansionist policies. Canberra is putting significant resources into upgrading the Australian Defense Force's land capabilities as it reconfigures to face a potential future conflict in the Asia-Pacific region with China being the main rival. The M1A2 Abrams SEP V3 will come in handy if the Chinese attempt to invade Australia. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.